Hey everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to the channel and my craft table. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. And if you're new, welcome. I am so glad that you found the channel. And thank you for spending your time with me. I really, really am so happy that you are here. And I wanted to start out with some Cricut Infusible Ink coasters. Now these are my favorite coasters to work with. They are just the Cricut brand. Um, you can pretty much pick them up anywhere. They are, they're come four to a package. They have a 3.6 inch diameter and I just think they're fabulous. They are heavy duty, substantial, they are ceramic, and they are different than the Cricut Square coasters that are very thin mm -hmm. to make fall coasters. And I'm going to be using a unique product out of my um, supply stash, so I hope that you um, a, enjoy the project, and B, that you get a little giggle out of it. In order to do this project, in addition to the coasters, um, I am going to be using my Cricut Joy. So I've just got my long mat with me. I have, of course, scissors. I'm going to have some tweezers out in case I need that to assist me with the weeding. I have a lint-free cloth for the coasters. I do have my lint roller hanging out in the wings. And then I have heat-resistant tape. And this is the Cricut brand heat-resistant tape. But you can absolutely use uh, any heat resistant tape brand that you prefer. And I have used the Hobby Lobby brand as well. That's a red tape and it's in their Cricut slash sublimation aisle. And I've been very pleased with both brands. So there we go. And then this is the part where I hope I give you a little bit of a giggle. I am going to be using the Patterned Animal Print Cricut Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets. Now, before you laugh too hard, I will not be using the animal print here itself. I am actually just gonna be focusing on these orange sheets. And maybe because I, I don't like to keep supplies in my craft stash for too very long, and I've actually had this for um, almost a year, and I would like to start using that so it doesn't hang out in my stash too long. I just worry about how long materials sit because we know that they have probably been sitting, you know, in a warehouse or on a store shelf or etc. So I do like to um, use up my materials and that way I shopped my space and I didn't have to go out and buy new products. So let me show you something that I've started to do. So what I did is in the box and I'll show you everything that comes in the box in case you're new to Infusible Ink. It comes with a little t-shirt swatch like this. And I took a tiny piece of each of the four ink sheets and I just cut them and I placed them face down, used some heat resistant tape to hold them down. And I pressed them because I wanted to get a feel for what the orange looked like. And I'm actually pretty pleased with both oranges. And I think either one would be fine for the coasters. It would give it kind of a, you know, they're not a bright, bright orange. They, they're, um, I don't know. I, want, I don't want to say they're, they're, well, I guess they're just, they're more subdued. You know, they're like a deep, rich um, fall harvest color. They're not like that bright, super Crayola orange. And so anyway, I pressed all four. I wanted to see what they look like. And just, you know, an epiphany went off in my head that this is a great idea to use with any infusible ink package that you have. Just take the swatch, uh, cut off a tiny little piece from each of the sheets. Go ahead and press that. I just used the Easy Press Mini on high for about 75 seconds. I did follow all of the other precautions by with the layering of butcher paper, etc. And then this way I can see exactly what each of the four sheets will look like once they have been pressed. So I thought that this would be a great tip to share with you today. And then these are the two that I will be focusing on. Probably more this than anything. I really am drawn to this color. So I'm probably just going to use this sheet in particular. Now let's head over to design space so that I can walk you through the design process of the four coasters that I'm going to be doing. And uh, I think you will enjoy them. Here in design space, I have pulled up a blank canvas. Now I've already been messing around with the designs prior to filming. So uh, I have already done the save feature and I just saved it as fall coasters. And let me show you what I've worked on. Um, I've made some what I call extra coasters and some quote video coasters. So these four here, I'm going to show you how I created them. 
And these are the four that we're going to uh, see in the video today. And then this particular group are just extra. And the reason why I tell you that is because I am going to link this design space link, project link down in the description for you in case you would like to recreate these coasters. Now I will tell you that this fall leaf right here was not uh, found in design space. So unfortunately this particular coaster right here with the fall leaf will not be included when you open this project file. Okay, so that is something that I've realized that if I purchased designs like through Creative Fabrica or Design Bundles and I bring them in, I am not 100% sure that you are able to recreate the project because the design isn't from Design Space. Now, I will tell you that this fall leaf right here was this particular leaf was purchased in Design Bundles. I will go ahead and link the fall um, bundle that I used because it has some great designs that you will see coming to the channel soon as well. So these four in particular are the ones that we're going to make today and I want to show you how I got them prepped and ready to go. This and then these over here, I just kind of grouped them. You can ungroup them when you open the file. But these are just a variety of things I had played around with. Um, this particular design I have used recently and that will be coming to the channel as well. If it has not already, it will be. Okay, so let me go ahead and hide the extra coasters. I'm just gonna put this down over here in this bottom corner. And one more thing I would like to share with you that I've learned recently, which has been a huge game changer for me, is when I am working in design space and I cannot remember, like if I've bookmarked something or I can't remember what image I used from design space, if you go to, Let's say I go here and I'm not sure what that was called and I open it up and then if I right click on it, okay, and I go down here to the bottom all the way to the bottom to image info, then a little sidebar will pop up and it tells you the number from design space of that design and then you, so you can actually click on that, it'll take you to that design directly. You can also click on view image sets and then that will take you to um, similar things. So in that kind of, you know, set of images. So I just wanted to share that with you because there are times where I want to recreate something or I want to use the same image and I cannot remember if I've bookmarked it. Sometimes I can't remember which little folder I've put it in, but now I can simply just go here and it will also give you font information. So. For instance, if I click on this one here and I do the same thing and you can right click from there or you can right click from here. Okay, and let's see if it'll give me the info. All right, so I, scroll, I just go to the bottom and hover over image info and this side deal pops up. It tells me I'm using a circle and it gives me the image number and then it says hello fall and it gives me the image number there. So. Now that is the one that I've been using. So the first thing I did is I went over to shapes and I grabbed a circle and I made it white and then I resized it up here to 3.6. Actually, I think maybe I did these at three and a half. I think I did those at three and a half. So before I cut anything, I will need to make sure that I have the right size. The diameter according to the package is 3.6 and I will be measuring them with my little measuring tape once I open them just to confirm. Okay, so I'm then going to duplicate that until I have a total of four. So now I have my four white coasters. Okay, you could always do coasters in sets of two. Um, I have a package that I've used where I have two left, so I'll probably make those for Halloween. Um, but I've got four, four come in a package. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my designs. So the first thing, I'm gonna go to images. And let's do, I'm just going to do hello fall. And then you get all of these images here. Like you can just, you can see that there are 14,273. And I have actually already bookmarked the one that I want to use. And I believe it was this one here. Also, if you go to an image, you can just click on it 
it'll give you the number here in the top, which you can, um, and it tells you it's a cut file. You can copy this and put this down wherever you need it. Um, and then it will give you some image sets. So these are similar to the one that is up here. You can see this one here has a shadow layer. If you were making a card, this would be a great thing to use. Okay, so just wanted to show you that this particular image has the print on the bottom and the script on the top, etc. So then I'm just going to click Add to Canvas. And then when you click on View, you can see it'll come in and it's quite large. So I'm going to go ahead and resize that down and we will be working with this a little bit more here shortly. In fact, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Okay. Then the next one that I want to do is I'm going to go back to images and you can actually do quite a few of these all at the same time. So let's do berry embellishment. And I am going to, oh, berry embellishment. Let me put circle on there. And I'm going to scroll down. So you got a ton of different types of uh, berry circles that you could use. And I'm going to use this one here. So I will just click on the plus sign. It has now been added to my canvas. The other thing that I wanted to do was a pumpkin. And you can see that there are 19,979 pumpkins. So instead of scrolling through and trying to find the one that I used earlier, because I spent a lot of time scrolling through the pumpkins and bookmarking the ones like here, like bookmarking the ones that I thought were super cute and that I wanted to try out this season. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my bookmarked pumpkins. This is the one that I chose. And I'm gonna go ahead and do add to canvas. And then the last thing is I'm going to go to upload and then this right here is the image that I brought in from the bundle that I purchased and I will link that bundle down in the description for you in case you want to go check that out for yourself. So I'm going to click on this and here at the bottom I'm going to click on add to canvas. So instead of bringing in one at a time, like I did with the Hello Fall, all three of these have come in at the same time. Now they're not grouped, but they are kind of selected all together. So you do have to kind of click over to the side. And then I'm gonna just start resizing these because I want them to fit inside here in my coasters, so we're going to resize them. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Now, this particular deal is already round, like my coaster. So I think what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna just size it up, but I really don't wanna go all the way to the edge. So I'm thinking more like three and a half, um, where it would have like a little bit of a, of a rim around it. I could even do 3.55, but this is fine. So I actually am going to get rid of that particular coaster. This one will be ready to go. So here's my pumpkin, resized it, okay. And then here's my leaf. I'm gonna resize this one. So get that the way it looks good to my eye. And I think that's pretty good. And then the Hello Fall, um, I'm gonna just move that. I think that looks good to my eye. Okay, and I've got lots of space around. Okay, so this particular one is ready and I'm just going to change that to orange. So now it looks like the one that I had earlier. Okay, now the hello fall and the leaf and the pumpkin. Let me move this one out of the way. Let's work with one at a time. So a couple things that you can do, and this is what I was talking to earlier. I could simply just have the words orange and the coaster white. I really like the idea of using more of the infusible ink. So what I did is I got the size the way I wanted. I selected both of them and I went up here to align and I did align center. 
And then while they were both selected, I came down here to slice down here in my layers panel. Now remember, you can only slice two layers at a time. So I did slice. And now I can move off the Hello Fall. That will be in orange and white. And then I'm left with a coaster that says Hello Fall. Okay. And then I came up here, changed it to orange. All right. So that's ready to go. Let's talk about our pumpkin. So our pumpkin has been resized. And let me go ahead, I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to, while it's both selected, I'm going to go to Align and Center. All right, looks like I did a great job the first time. It really didn't move it, if at all. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is come in here with this pumpkin. And I'm going to do Attach. Okay, it's all one deal. Actually, nope. I don't want to do a touch. I want it to do weld. So I'm going to click on this pumpkin and I'm going to weld it together because it needs to be one layer. There it is. And you can see it's turned orange. Okay. All right. So there's that. I'm going to bring it back over. It's one layer all on its own. I'm going to select both, go to align and center, make sure I didn't move anything out of place. Okay. And then what I'm going to do since they're both selected is come down here to slice. And once it slices out, I'm going to move that pumpkin and that pumpkin. And I'm left with my one image, which I will then change to orange as well. Now we're going to come over here to our leaf. Now the leaf, you can see that I really, let's sleep. We're going to change that to the orange color. There we go. Now I want to show you something about this leaf. If you ever see some, so I changed it and everything kind of went like, weird. I got this little weird part here. Okay. I'm actually just going to pull that. If I pull out all these little different layers like this, see how they're all, I don't, I don't need these. I really just need the one leaf. So you can ungroup your things. And if you see funky layers and you're like, Oh, I don't need this. I don't need that. This one isn't a very clean image. This one, I don't know if you can tell, but there's, um, it's lot, to me, it looks a little blurry. This one looks the cleanest. So I'm going to keep this one, but I'm going to, that's the one I'm going to keep, but I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of that one. And then I'm going to get rid of those three. And this is the only part of that leaf image that I used. Okay. So I just wanted to share with you that sometimes in your, in your, uh, cut files, there's different layers that you may or may not want to use. And in my case, I did not want to use all those extra layers. So here is my leaf. I'm going to select both, go to align, go to center. I'm going to do attach on this one. Now, again, I know that we're going to be using the orange. Okay. Um, let's see, but this will give the, um, joy a boundary. And that way it'll just be a little easier for me to weed that out. All right, let's zoom back out. Okay, it's now ready to go. All of these are ready to go. And I'm not gonna change this to 3.55 because I am just using the leaf and it'll be totally fine where it is. So these are the four that I'm going to be using. Now, these over here, all of these little bits and pieces, you are welcome to save those and keep those in your file or you can delete them just like that, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and just hide the quote video coasters that I had from earlier. Okay. And um, again, I will have the video coasters and the extra coasters in this design file link for you so that you can recreate the project. But the leaf will not be in here. And I may go into design space and find something similar and put it in here. So if you open the file and you see a leaf, just know that it is a different one that I've used here. It is one that I found in Design Space that looks very similar. And that way I just pulled it in for you for convenience. Okay, so the next thing as far as making these. All right, so I'm going to change my machine up here to the Cricut Joy. And again, you can use this on any of your Cricut 
um, machines. I'm going to go to the make screen. All right, once we've connected to our joy, you can see here where I have my long mat and three coasters will fit on the long mat. So I'm literally going to do a four by 12 piece of my infusible ink sheet. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click now the middle and the last one, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of space. I like to let things breathe a little bit, okay? And then I will need to mirror this. So now everything has been mirrored. And then I'm gonna go to the second mat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit mirror. Now, this design and the pumpkin and the leaf, the mirror really doesn't matter. What, what it's gonna matter on is the words, okay? But it's a good habit to always mirror when you're using uh, iron-on anything, whether it's infusible ink or vinyl, etc. So I have it all mirrored, and so I will have to run my mat twice, which is totally fine with me, not a problem. I'm gonna click on continue. Okay, once I'm connected to my Joy via Bluetooth, I can then find my material. So I already have infusible ink sheets um, bookmarked. If you don't, you just click here on Browse on Materials and you can either type in the word infusible in the little um, search box or you can just scroll through until you find that. So I'm gonna click on the infusible ink transfer sheet and something that I personally like to do, and you will need to gauge this for your own um, machine, but I typically will do more pressure when I'm working with uh, Infusible Ink or the Iron-On Vinyl. It's just something that works for me. Um, if it doesn't work for you, you certainly don't have to select more pressure. You can just leave it at default. The fine point blade is already loaded in my machine. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to prep your mat really fast. Then we will load this into the machine and when prompted, I will click go and we will get this cut out. Okay, when you first open your box for infusible ink, you will notice that your sheets come in a black bag and you do wanna save this bag because this is where your materials need to be placed when you are saving the rest of the materials for a later project. And inside the packaging, you're gonna get a little desiccant, uh, desiccant packet and save that because it can keep your stuff free of moisture. You're gonna have your four sheets rolled up. You are gonna have some butcher paper, uh, I believe it's four sheets, and those will be rolled up in here. I've already removed those. You will also have the little t-shirt swatch that I showed you earlier. And again, um, I wish I had thought of this a really long time ago because this could have saved me some grief in some earlier projects. But I would suggest strongly to make a little swatch of the materials that come in that package and then you, you know exactly what they're gonna look like. Okay, so when you unroll your um, sheets, Okay, um, you'll notice here, see how it's a lot darker than it is here. Your sheets are gonna look very muted and that is totally okay. Make sure that your hands are dry and clean, no oils, no lotion, etc. And I'm gonna pull this one off because that is the one I wanna use. Here is the lighter orange and you can see the two animal prints. Now our mascot at school is a tiger so i think i'm gonna have to make something with the with the tiger um, infusible ink sheet to store your materials that you have left over including scraps i have made plenty of small uh, projects like little cosmetic bags mugs etc so when you have little scraps definitely save them but i'm going to just put them here in this little black bag and i'm going to put it back in the box Okay, and I'm just going to save that for future projects. Okay, so the next thing is, is I'm going to need a four by 12 um, piece of this particular sheet. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, cut off four inches from this side and four inches from this side because I want that darker orange. So let me grab my large 
paper trim or my large um, paper cutter and then we'll get this cut and get it onto the mat. I have this right here and uh, then you'll notice that I did cut the the other one for the extra and um, I think I'm, I'm going to decide which image I want to use for this one because um, basically this is the gradient one and I want to see which image that I want to do. So we had the berry and we had hello fall, we had the leaf and we had the pumpkin. So I think I'm going to use this one for the hello fall. So wherever that is on my design space, um, wherever this is on my design space is where I will put this particular image. Or actually, let me show you a little trick. I want to make sure that the hello fall uses this. So let's go back to design space for just a few seconds so I can show you how I can move things around. Okay, so here in design space, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip flop. I'm going to select these three little dots and click move. And I'm going to take that berry and I'm going to move that to this main page. And then I'm going to take this hello fall, click on the three dots, click on move, and I'm going to move that to the second mat. Okay, so hello fall, we'll have that at the top and it is mirrored. Oh, and another thing in case you haven't noticed, but design space now does an auto mirror. If you don't turn it on now, I, I would double check before you do any cutting, but I've noticed the last couple of projects where if I didn't automatically have it mirrored myself, that it was, um, it was defaulting to like an auto mirror. If I was using infusible ink or, um, an uh, iron on. So kind of a neat little feature in case you ever forget. I'm so glad that they chose to do that. But again, always make sure that it's mirrored on your own, just in case for some reason that auto feature doesn't turn on. Okay, so I have my leaf and I have my little pumpkin and I have my berries. Okay, so this will be the sheet that is pretty solid orange. And then I'm gonna use that gradient sheet for the hello fall and I'm okay with that and really it's just a matter of whether I want the great the lighter part at the top or the lighter part at the bottom okay so let's go to continue okay I'm going to select the infusible ink okay make sure mirror is turned on so mirror is there I'm going to do more pressure this is just a preference of mine I am going to do remember material settings and everything is there so let's go back to the camera and i'm just going to show you how this gets placed on your mat okay so when you are using infusible ink you still are going to do the same thing where you want that shiny side down so this is the carrier sheet so we want that shiny side down and this is the ink side okay so i'm going to just place this on here so again for iron on and infusible ink it's always the shiny side down and so I'm going to get this, okay, and then I'm going to grab my grayer, and I'm just going to go over that and make sure it is well adhered to my cutting mat, so we don't have any lifting. And if you have a well-loved mat, you can always put some washi on the corners just to kind of hold it into place and make sure that you have it the way it is. So then what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to just load this in. And then as soon as I am prompted, then we will get cutting. All right, everything has now been cut out and now we're gonna have the fun job of weeding these designs. And a couple will be um, definitely quicker than others. In fact, the berry one will probably take the most time. So I will more than likely just 
speed up the video for you and you can watch the weeding process. However, before I do that, I want to tell you that when you're weeding infusible ink, once you pull it off, you want to go through and you want to, for the lack of a better word, you want to crack the sheet and all of the design. You can kind of hear it. So basically you're just loosening all of those cut lines, okay? And that helps with the weeding. And you don't want to use a weeding tool if at all possible. If you really need it, you can use some tweezers, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get all of and speed the video up, play some music, and I'm going to go ahead and get these weeded out. Everything has been weeded out. Now, I'm actually quite excited because I have the I have the Hello Fall, I have the pumpkin, the leaf, and then of course the berry circle. Bonus, I love two for ones, especially like when I'm making cards and I can do like two things. This came out beautiful. This right here, I could completely put this on another mug and I could totally make, I'm sorry, another mug. I could put it on um, another coaster. I could put it on the edge of a mug like this. Sorry for my coffee there. I could put it on the edge of a mug there and get a nice design. Um, I also, the pumpkin came out gorgeous. So these little pumpkin slivers, and then I have the top here. So again, I could piece these together on another project. And then this Hello Fall, all of these letters came out super nice. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna use these pretty quick. I don't want my infusible ink to get, you know, um, I, I need it to stay clean and dry and in a dark place. But in, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these in a little baggie and then I'm going to put them back in the box with everything else. And then I'm going to put them on another project as soon as I get that planned out. But so when you're weeding your infusible ink, just be really mindful about the shapes. Like these shapes here were big and friendly. So I was able to pull these off. And this is what I do with my infusible ink is if I can use the, the stuff that I'm pulling off, in another way, I do that. I don't just toss it because that's great real estate and that looks really pretty. Okay, let me move those aside and then we'll go ahead and get the uh, coasters prepped and get them pressed. I have had my um, Easy Press 2 heating up and so we are pretty much ready to go. I have the coasters here and I'm going to be prepping this all here in just a second, but I wanted to let you know that in between your coasters, it does come with these little um, protective little pieces of paper, which you can just toss, you don't need them. And then your coasters, I don't know if you can tell, like one side is shiny. Let's see, there we go. Nice and shiny. And this is the side that you will put the infusible ink down on. And then the back side is like a dull, um, like a stoneware um, side right there. And so that is not where you put the infusible ink. Okay, let's go ahead and get these prepped. Okay, so I have my mat. I have a cardboard. This is just a piece of cardboard that I like to put down and then I usually put down a piece of butcher paper and then I'm gonna put these on here. I'm gonna press all four of these at the same time. Okay, so when I go to press these, I'm gonna press all four at the same time. We are going to be using the Easy Press 2 and we're gonna be doing this at 400 degrees for 240 minutes, okay? 
And then when these are prepped, I have some more butcher paper to go on top. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to go over these with a lint-free cloth. And you don't want anything on your coasters. Now I did just take these out of the box while everything was cutting, but I'm gonna go ahead and run a lint roller over these as well. Um, because what I don't want to have happen is any dust or anything to be accidentally left behind and looked over. Okay, so there we go. And then I'm just gonna place all of these on my coasters. Now when I do that, okay, I am going to use some tape and actually I'm gonna turn it over like this so I can kind of get it centered. There we go. Now here's something that you notice, like the packaging says that these are 3.6 in diameter and I made my rounds at 3.55, but they are a little bit bigger. So I would say to you to use 3.5, right? So what I'm gonna do is I am just folding up the edge, this corner, and I'm taping it down with my heat resistant tape. And I like to do this because I do not want this material to move. I don't want the coaster to move. I need it to be, you know, very, very secure. Okay, so this pumpkin right here is not going to move. All right, so there we go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Now the leaf is gonna be a little bit easier on the other side there. All right, so I'm gonna just line up my leaf where I want it, that it looks good to my eye. And the carrier sheet for this infusible ink is sticky. So it, it does help out a little bit. It, you know, it, does that look, there we go. Okay, so like a design like this, you know, where most of it, most of this carrier sheet is stuck to the coaster, you know, I don't really need a lot of tape, but I just have a habit, you know, habits, how they are. And I just find that it's safer to do it that way. So now these are all prepped and ready to go. And I know it seems, you know, we feel like we need to put it this way, but you definitely want to have the raw side of the coaster facing up and the infusible ink is underneath that. So your, your heat press is going to press down on that raw side of your coaster, not that pretty laminate side. Okay, so these are good to go and i'm gonna place my butcher paper on top right there and then let me bring in my heat press so i am doing 400 degrees 240 seconds i'm going to place this straight down no pressure and as soon as i place it down it's going to be hands off and i'm not going to move when it is finished i'm going to lift straight up not off to the side Now that this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and lift straight up and put this back in the cradle and then we will take a look at what we have. So we've got the press back in the cradle. I'm gonna go ahead and lift the um, butcher paper. And then you can, I don't know if you can see on camera, well, maybe, but along this impression area, um, it, doesn't really have, it doesn't have any ink going on, but it does have like a scorchy pattern, which could be ink. I mean, this is orange. I am gonna toss this. I'm not gonna reuse this sheet. Now this particular one is still clean. I'm gonna go ahead and save that for another project. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide these off of my Easy Press mat because this is designed to hold heat and keep that um, heat on your project. And then I will very carefully slide each of these, slide that out under there. Okay, and I'm just gonna let these sit here for a minute. These are super, super hot. So while these are cooling, like if I put my hand over here, I could probably roast some marshmallows. They're really, really hot. You could use heat resistant gloves if you wanted to go ahead, but I am gonna let these cool. I tend to have the best success when I let my coasters and my mugs cool. And once they are cool, then I reveal them. And I, I tend to have really, really good results when I do it that way. So I'm just gonna let these sit here on my glass mat, which this glass mat is really hot right here. You can just feel it. And I'm gonna just let these cool off while I do a mid craft cleanup. And then I will be back for the big reveal. These are just ever so slightly warm. You know, they're pretty much cool to the touch. So let's go ahead and reveal what these look like. So for me, this is always the part where I can't decide if I'm excited or nervous. But Okay, I'm gonna loosen all of these. And of course I don't remember which one was which, so this will be like opening a fall present Okay, so. all right, there is the Hello Fall. That actually came out really good. I got a little off, you can see right here and right there. I got a little off in my placement, but oh my goodness, that is, that's gorgeous. That is just beautiful. Okay, let's do the other one. And then you can see like all of the ink is pretty much off of that infusible ink sheet. And another thing that I forgot to mention, infusible ink is really mm, fragrant. Okay, so because it is super fragrant, you do need to open a window, turn on a fan, etc. Um, I did open the window while it was uh, pressing. And I forgot to mention that earlier. So if you are new to infusible ink, you will need to have a well-ventilated area. Okay, so here is this one. And I can see ever so slightly right down here, there's a little, the, this little berry cluster is just ever so slightly lighter. But I don't know. But that really, I mean, you can't really, you can't really tell from, I put that, oh, let's do, nope, that's such a glare. Okay, so we'll just put them, we'll put those right there. Oh, these look so good. Okay, so a couple things. One, are you crafting for Halloween? Are you crafting for fall? Are you crafting just in general, fall or Halloween? And I would say drop me an emoji down in the description. Like if you're doing fall, you could put a leaf or a pumpkin. If you're doing if you're doing Halloween, you could put like a ghost or something. If you are just doing general crafts, you could put a pair of scissors or whatever. Oh my goodness, look at that leaf. That is absolutely stunning. Oh, okay, that leaf, I'm telling you. Okay, so this one must be the pumpkin. Yeah, I'm very excited. Finally crafting for fall. I'll do some fall, I'll do some Halloween. And I 
Okay, here is the pumpkin. Now you can see right here, just a little bit of a light, I don't want to say a shadow, but like a little bitty light deal, but oh, that pumpkin. Okay, I am super pleased with how these turned out. These are so gorgeous. They, like I'm telling you, this, this is something you could gift to somebody. You could, you know, oh. You could put these in a fall craft fair. Like those are just amazing. This turned out super successful. And I just think it's funny that I used the animal print orange solid sheet. So I was able to use what was in my craft stash without having to go out and buy orange infusible ink. And I actually really like this color of orange and I like this gradient effect right there. So I'd say fantastic. What a success. Okay, well, that wraps up today's video. These fall coasters turned out amazing, and I'm so thankful that you were here today. I'm, I will be putting out some more fall videos, and I'm also going to be starting some Halloween crafts here soon. So those will be coming to the channel. If you are not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And let me know down in the comments, like what are you crafting during the season? What would you like to see come to the channel? And um, I guess that is all for today. So until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting.